Hello and welcome to the third lecture in the series of Building Technology Lectures. This lecture picks up on some of the topics covered in the previous lecture on built heritage. In previous lectures we looked at how our built heritage is our inheritance from previous generations and we also looked at the methods and mechanisms by which they are protected. Scotland has a rich built heritage covering all types of buildings from all eras. This heritage is closely linked to our national identity. If we asked any tourist what Scotland is famous for, um, and after whisky and haggis, they would probably say castles. Scotland has a great many castles, some intact, some in ruins, but we also have a great deal of ordinary buildings, which are just as important. Built heritage need not be only about large, impressive buildings. We need to think about buildings of all ages and types. Scotland has some very old and very interesting ordinary buildings. Houses at the Knapp of Hower and Orkney are reported to be the oldest surviving dwellings in Northern Europe. People, just like us, sat in these buildings sheltering from the cold some five and a half thousand years ago. A collection of buildings at Scara Bray, a Neolithic hamlet on the Orkney mainland, is almost as old. Both sites have recognisable houses with functional areas that we would recognise today. Areas for sleeping, areas for cooking, and even built-in storage made of stone. To be important to us, buildings don't need to be that old. Lots of other buildings can be important to us without being archaeologically significant. Buildings let us connect to the past. We can use existing buildings to give us cues about how we can relate buildings to their surroundings and how our new buildings respond to culture and heritage. And we could refer to this as the context. The context can help us think about the shape and the form of buildings, the type of materials that we might employ, and also they can give us clues about how buildings fit into the landscape and how the landscape works alongside the design. If we look at a single example, we can trace influence through a number of buildings in a number of generations. This building is a traditional Western Isles black house, a low single story building with robust stone walls. The building is rooted to the land. The roof is a pitched roof finished in thatch and weighed down by stones. The shape of the building has two forms side by side, both of which are quite narrow. Stepping forward to the late 20th century, and architecture firms in Scotland began to look to their forefathers and previous generations for inspiration. The form of this building is recognisable. We see two buildings side by side. The stone walls are still there. The roof is still pitched. It's clear that recognition of the importance of culture was a significant driver for this design. And if we travel even further towards the present day, the same architects have begun to extract and abstract that same idea. The form has been purified, but it's still essentially the same. Two buildings, quite narrow, next to each other. The low stone walls are disconnected from the building, but they're still there, echoing the original precedent. The idea of low slung buildings with simple forms is not limited to the Western Isles. This building by a French architect plays on the same cultural references to create a building in Scotland which is contemporary without appearing out of place. We can see this cultural inheritance effect in other buildings. Corgarth Castle, a defensive tower house in Aberdeenshire, exhibits mass and weight. The ratio between wall and window is small and the shape of the building is created by a single form which is added to by basic solids. Hill House by Charles Rennie Mackintosh shows a similar relationship between wall and window and has the same strategy of additive form making. Ruined castles all over Scotland have round defensive towers at their corners and solid curtain walls and arrow slit windows. Abstracting this 
provides us with a National Museum building which speaks of the land that it represents. The construction aspect which joins all these buildings together and is common to many of our historic buildings is stone. Stone is the predominant material of our built heritage. Sandstone is common to Glasgow and Edinburgh as well as to other areas. Granite is synonymous with Aberdeen in the northeast. Further north we find large slabs of Caithness stone being employed in walls and landscape works. In future lectures we will look at how stone is used differently in different locations, how mortar was used or not used to bind walls and to add strength. We will look at how foundations developed and how simple functional elements developed into ornament. In conclusion, aspects we should take from this lecture are that our buildings are connected with our culture and that we can learn from the past when designing for the future. We should also consider that stone in various forms makes up a significant amount of our built, built heritage and that its use can contribute to our regional identities. Thank you very much for listening. If you've got any questions, please leave a comment or ask me directly after the next workshop.